think it's a breaking point of the school integration. I just don't uh, feel that they have a right to go to school. In September of 1957, nine black school children, the eldest only 17, forced us through such a blockade. They sought a better education for themselves and the opportunity to pursue the American dream. Starting in the 1950s, after the Brown versus Board of Education ruling, schools began to be desegregated. Brown did end uh, the era of Jim Crow schools and indeed had a ripple effect throughout uh, the society, so our domino effect, so that Jim Crow institutions uh, no longer could survive. It wasn't simply about schools. And that's very important. The High Court sent an extremely important message that we would no longer have a society of white supremacy and black subordination. The Thurmstroms have written this book. No However, this did not fix the issue of segregation and equal opportunity for all students. It refer to equal opportunity, and that's, of course, an unfulfilled promise, but Brown... But Even though schools are now desegregated, there is still a divide in other aspects of learning and academics. This divide in learning is seen through standardized test scores between white and black students. This gap has shown that white students tend to score higher on standardized testing, leaving the question as to why this gap is occurring still after the desegregation of schools. There are many different aspects that have been identified as to why this gap is visible. One of the biggest factors is socioeconomic status. This basically means that the nicer the neighborhood you live in, the nicer the school is, which comes with better teachers and better education. According to the 2018 U.S. Census data, 20.8% of African Americans live in poverty, while 10.1% of whites live in poverty. White students tend to grow up in wealthier neighborhoods with wealthier school districts that come with more educational resources and opportunities. This shows that there is indeed a difference in socioeconomic status between these two races. And teacher quality as a source of racial inequality. The conventional wisdom today, I think, is that, uh, well, of course we have a racial gap in learning because, in good part at least, minority and, for that matter, low-income children have always been stuck with the worst teachers, and they need to have much better teachers, like suburban white kids do, to level the playing. This video is an example of the socioeconomic differences in high school students. The winner of this race will take this. It's a hundred dollar bill. Before I say go, I'm going to make a couple statements. If those statements apply to you, I want you to take two steps forward. Take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. Take two steps forward if you had access to a free tutor growing up. Your athletic ability, you don't have to pay for college. We all know these people up here have a better opportunity to win this $100. Does that mean these people back here can't race? No. We would be foolish to not realize we've been given more opportunity. We don't want to recognize that we've been given a head start. This graph talking about black versus white income shows that there is indeed a difference in socioeconomic well-being. This difference plays a big role in the black-white score gap. It has been identified that this gap begins in kindergarten, showing that the gap's biggest contributor is the environment a student is growing up and being educated in. Standardized test importance stretches beyond elementary through high school education and college entrance exams like the ACT and SAT. This graph shows that colleges stress the importance of ACT and SAT scores. These tests have become a measure of a student's performance and can determine a student's academic future. Based on the graph, from 1996 to 2014, the black-white SAT math score gap hasn't closed much. Most students who excel on these tests have had months of expensive tutoring and prep programs that not all students can afford. As seen on this graph, these prep programs can cost up to $1,000 or more. 
Children living in poverty do not have access to the same resources that socioeconomically stable kids do. Overall, the issue of the white-black score gap has many different contributing factors and is indeed a prominent problem. This would also eliminate the need for programs like affirmative action and would allow universities to solely focus on the students themselves.